the landscape of purchasing a Tesla in 2024 has undergone significant transformations compared to just a year ago in 2023. As hinted in today's video title, we'll explore five critical mistakes to avoid when acquiring a Tesla. From choosing the right model and accessories to the dilemma of whether to make the purchase now or hold off for the anticipated 2025 model, these are decisions that warrant careful consideration. Join me, Adam Tech, on this journey as we delve into the intricacies of buying a Tesla in 2024. Now let's get started. 1. The first mistake that I want to mention today is buying a car with too much or too little range. This is the mistake that impacts the cost most. So let's start off by talking about buying too much range. Frequently, many first-time electric vehicle buyers tend to aim for a range that matches their gasoline vehicle, often exceeding 400 miles. In the case of Tesla, this choice places buyers in the high-end spectrum, typically opting for the priciest model, the Model S. The long-range variant with standard wheels boasts an EPA-estimated range of 405 miles, commanding a hefty price tag of nearly $75,000. According to Department of Transportation Statistics, the average US driver covers 37 miles per day. That means with Model S, you can go about 10 days without recharging. However, electric cars operate differently than this in practice. It's essential to recognize that the best practice for electric vehicles involves charging your car each night at home, similar to the routine of charging a smartphone. Thus, the need to utilize the entire 405 miles on your Model S is infrequent. Opting for a model with less range is totally fine, and as you'll soon realize, it significantly reduces the overall cost of your Tesla purchase. Even for those occasional road trips, Tesla's extensive supercharger network comes into play. With more than 50,000 supercharger stations worldwide, Tesla provides a convenient solution for road trip charging. Even the lowest range Tesla models can efficiently make long journeys thanks to quick charging at supercharger stations, replenishing 200 miles of range in just 15 minutes. This makes the need for an exceptionally high range less critical for most drivers. Nevertheless, choosing a car with too little range isn't recommended either. Here's the thing. All Tesla vehicles have an EPA range, but the actual range in real-world conditions is often less. This is because the way you drive and other factors can differ significantly from the standard conditions the EPA uses. For those considering the purchase of Tesla's Model S, Model X or Model Y, it's essential to be aware of recent updates to their EPA range. Tesla has made some adjustments due to changes in the EPA process. Specifically, in the Model S lineup, the long-range variant still boasts an impressive 405-mile range while the Model S Plaid experiences a reduction from 396 miles to 359 miles. Additionally, Tesla has fine-tuned range estimates for different wheel configurations. For example, the Model S Plaid with 21-inch wheels now offers a range of 320 miles, down from 348. Similarly, the Model X has undergone adjustments in its EPA-rated range, with the long range now providing a 335 mile range compared to the previous 348 miles. The Plaid variant of the Model X has also seen a reduction to 326 miles from the previous 333 miles. Significant adjustments have been made in the Model Y lineup. The Model Y long range now has a reduced range of 310 miles, down from the previous 330 miles while the performance model boasts a range of 285 miles, a decrease from 303 miles. In contrast, the rear-wheel drive variant maintains a consistent range of 260 miles. It's crucial to note that these changes are specific to the EPA testing cycle in the US and potentially Canada, and they do not impact the range estimates in other countries. Given that it's often hard to match Tesla's previous EPA estimates, these changes should result in more realistic, real-world numbers, giving owners a better expectation of the range of their new vehicles. It's clear that choosing the right range for your Tesla is about much more than just numbers on a screen. It's about how you plan to use your car in the real world. Balancing between too much range, which can add unnecessary cost, 
and too little range, which could leave you feeling anxious about running low on battery, is key to making the most out of your EV experience. But now, we want to hear your thoughts and get you thinking about your own driving habits. Picture this. You're gearing up for a cross-country road trip. Do you think you'd be more comfortable with option one? Investing in a Tesla with a higher range that might cost more up front, but gives you the freedom to go longer distances without frequent stops? Or would you prefer option two, saving some cash by choosing a model with a slightly lower range and taking advantage of Tesla's widespread supercharger network, stopping periodically to recharge on the go? Let us know your choice in the comments below. Two, now let's move to the second mistake today, wasting your $6,000 on enhanced autopilot. Now, here's where things get a bit tricky and you need to exercise caution when considering the enhanced autopilot option. This upgrade costs $6,000, and while I believe it's a worthwhile investment, I wouldn't recommend getting it right away unless you frequently go on road trips. Here's why. Tesla cars used to have additional sensors that assisted with features like summon and auto park. However, these sensors were removed some time ago and Tesla shifted to relying solely on cameras to handle these tasks. Despite continuous improvements, the system is not fully ready yet. So, many of the features, such as Summon, Smart Summon and Auto Park, are not available at this point. Essentially, paying $6,000 right now gets you navigating on autopilot and auto lane changes, which are still beneficial features, but you're not getting the full suite of capabilities promised by Enhanced Autopilot. Moreover, it's important to clarify that neither Autopilot nor Enhanced Autopilot is fully autonomous. Both systems fall under SAE Level 2 out of 5, which means the vehicle systems can control braking, accelerating and steering, but the driver must still hold the steering wheel and be ready to intervene at any time. If you're looking for Level 4 or Level 5 autonomous technology, you should wait for Tesla to complete full self-driving version 12. Tesla has made significant strides in developing self-driving technology, with a focus on enhancing driving safety. Full self-driving version 12 is a testament to these efforts, aiming for Level 4 or Level 5 autonomy by late 2024. Elon Musk discussed Tesla's progress in full self-driving FSD, during the 2023 World Artificial Intelligence Conference, emphasizing the company's dedication to delivering a fully autonomous driving experience in the future. As reported by the Canberra Times, Tesla is actively testing the latest version of its full self-driving technology on Australian roads, along with testing in a dozen other countries. The initial rollout of FSD version 12 began in late November the previous year, initially for Tesla employees. Subsequently, on December 21st, version 12.1 was expanded to include a larger group comprising over 15,000 employee vehicles. Elon Musk has indicated that the company is conducting extra testing on version 12 before making the software more widely available to the public. 3. Not planning ahead for a charging strategy can be the biggest mistake you've ever made. In a move reminiscent of the iPhone strategy, Tesla has also adopted a charger-free approach when you order a new vehicle. This decision aims to reduce electronic waste and contribute to environmental protection. However, it means that when you're ordering your Tesla, it no longer comes with any charging options. Consequently, you'll need to purchase them in advance or at the time of your vehicle purchase. The mistake to avoid here is not planning ahead for charging. The most convenient and efficient way to charge your electric vehicle is at home, so it's crucial to plan accordingly to ensure you have the right charging setup that best fits your needs. There are three primary ways to charge your Tesla at home. The first option is using the Tesla mobile connector, which plugs into a standard 110 volt wall outlet. It's recommended to have the mobile charging kit on hand for emergencies, providing a trickle charge if needed during extended trips or unforeseen situations. With a standard outlet, you can recharge up to three miles of range per hour using the NEMA 515 adapter or up to 30 miles of range with the NEMA 1450 adapter, depending on your vehicle. The second option involves having an electrician install a 240 volt wall outlet, similar to a dryer outlet. This significantly increases charging speed to around 30 miles of range per hour. 
The last and most convenient way is to have a Tesla wall connector installed. However, instead of ordering the wall connector on the build page, I recommend going to the Tesla shop and getting the universal wall connector. Priced at $595, it serves as a versatile charging solution for both Tesla and non-Tesla electric vehicles, suitable for homes, apartments, hospitality properties and workplaces. Some outstanding features include adding up to 44 miles of range per hour with an 11 kilowatt 48 amp output, integration with a J1772 adapter for charging any electric vehicle, and an auto-sensing handle to open a Tesla charge port. It's important to be aware that the universal wall connector is currently out of stock, so you may need to wait until Tesla restocks them. Four. Finally, you must be careful with the financing part when purchasing a Tesla car. Elon Musk has expressed concerns about the impact of high interest rates on potential car buyers during the earnings call last year. After ordering a Tesla and filling out all of the necessary information in the app, it then asks you to begin the financing process. This is where you can get a loan from Tesla, and it's actually not Tesla Finance, they just give it to a random bank. Here's a crucial tip. Wait before diving into the financing aspect of the vehicle purchase. Why wait? Here's the deal. If you jump into the financing process right away, they'll check your credit and offer you a loan. But here's the catch. That loan offer is only valid for 30 to 60 days. If there are delays and you don't get your car by then, you have to reapply for that loan. For people who don't know, when they do a credit check, it decreases your credit score and leads to a higher interest rate. So. Imagine this, you might end up paying much more money for the same car just because you didn't wait a bit. It's like paying extra for no good reason. To avoid this, it's a smart move to wait until you have a VIN number. Once you've got that, you still usually have some time, around a week or so, to sort out your finances and secure a delivery date without risking any unnecessary increases in interest rates. It's all about being patient and making sure you don't end up spending more than you have to for your new ride. What's your take on today's discussion? Are there other important factors that Tesla buyers should consider when making a purchase? Share your valuable insights and experiences in the comments below. Don't forget to stay connected with our channel by liking, subscribing and hitting the bell icon for the latest updates.